Welcome to our Symmetron webinar. My name is Michael and I work in tech support at Symmetron. Today we're going to look at utilizing ECO. We're going to look at Replace Master and then a technique I use uh, when the job is further along and Replace Ma Master is not a practical tool to use. Please put any questions in the chat and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. The first option we're going to look at is Replace Master. And Replace Master, I'm very selective when I'll use it. Uh, one situation where I'll use it is if I'm very early in a design and I'm not quite at the preliminary stage. The other situation would be if it's a fairly simple open and closed part. The reason for that is with the work part active here, Replace master goes all the way to loading the work part. So anything associated with that work part will go through a regeneration uh, all the way through, okay? So again, very selective when I use it. Uh, probably only use it five to 10% of the time. So going through this, we'll go to tools, um, ECO, and if we take a look, currently there's no tab down here and there's no ECO assembly here, and that's because I didn't load the master part when I added the work parts, okay? So I can go add comparison. Go to my new part, in this case is R5. You can see currently it's a scale of one. It wants me to pick a reference part to load it. So once I select the work part, you will notice that the scale has changed to what was applied to the work part. The next step is it's looking at previous modification part. I don't have a, again, a copy of the master when I loaded the work part, in this case, I'll select previous modification part and I will pick the work part on the screen. I will say OK. And all this is doing is loading the new part. It's not doing a compare. It's just loading the new part. I can go to ECO. I can see it gives it a generic ECO1. I can right click and say name or rename. And I'll call it R1 to R5. Just to help keep this organized in some way. I can now right click on uh, the ECO and say new ECO comparison. It already knows the work part is the receiving part. And R5 is a new one and I can tell it start the comparison. It'll come up with a legend. This part's gone through extensive changes, so we can start turning off some of the lines, uh, any unchanged faces, and then we can see that the ones in red are all gonna be removed. The ones in blue are the new faces. And then they have what are coincident faces, and what those are are faces that exist in both parts, except maybe the trims in them are different. Okay, so you can see that it's been shortened. So the receiving part, coincident faces used to go further. I will say okay to that. And now I will right click on that comparison to and say replace master. It'll give me the warning, irreversible. I will say yes. It's going to replace the work, R1 work with R5. And it's gonna, because it's going to the beginning, there's going to be requests to suppress things. I'm just going to tell it, yeah, suppress everything, go to the end, and let it do what it has to do. 
If I make the work part active, and I hover over the import now, it'll say R5. So the change has taken place. Uh, once I'm done implementing it, I would come back and I would rename the work parts R5 and keep the file clean and up to date going forward. I will turn off the ECO part and if we take a look at quick split, slide it, you can see that we have to update it because all the new faces. So I can right click on cavity, edit direction, start analysis, OK. Core, edit direction, start analysis, OK. Obviously, if it was more involved, I would, you know, manually or, or switch faces to sides, whatever is required. Uh, in this case, everything worked out clean. Next, I'm going to go to parting faces or parting surface part. You can see they're kind of jacked up due to the change. I'm going to turn off the cavity side for now. And I'm just going to work down this uh, feature tree. I'll start with the composite. So it only has partial part of it left. Um, due to the change in the boundary, again, I'll go clear selection or with that one being last, maybe I'll try picking this one. Jumped over, I can change it to a long open edge. And that'll update. Next, I'll do the extend. And I will clear selection. Repick that curve. So that looks good. Next is a composite curve for the extensions. I'll edit that curve. Again, my options are I can continue picking or I can say clear selection and pick it all fresh. Up to you how extensive you know the changes are and how the geometry is. Composite faces are no longer relevant. That had to do with how the runoff was created previously. It was used to clean it up. I can now edit the trim, go back to step one and select the essentially the new faces that were created from that composite curve. Okay, so I'll say OK. Next are the cap internal islands. There's a break there, an easy fix. Previously, we had horizontal slots. Now we have vertical. Some of the curves were not selected. I'll select them, say OK. Lastly, we'll update the copy mirror. Go back to step one. I'm going to pick the cap internal islands. and say OK. As far as the part and the parting, that's all updated. Uh, next, we're going to look at these cavity and core parting lines. I have these parts standard in my assemblies. Uh, and what I do, they're blank parts. Once I have my parting all done, um, I will use cut active and does an import and a stitch into that. Uh, before we get to that part though, uh, we'll check our parting attributes. And we can see that parting attributes not including the new faces. So what I'll do is I will select across here. It'll only pick faces that are not assigned. I'll say okay to that, say okay. And now when I slide it, the attributes have been created for those faces. I can go to cavity parting line. 
I can see that the cut active in there is needing update. I will edit it. I'm going to clear selection. And I'm going to pick one face on each part. Middle button, it's on import. And like I said previously, it's going to import and stitch them together to create a skin. Again, history has been uh, trickled down and the cut's not going to be able to work. So I'm simply going to tell it to go, suppress that. And then I'll make the core active. Edit the cut active. Clear. Roll it over a little bit. Pick a face, pick a face. Same thing there, except there's a round that's an issue also. And it's because the faces are now a female, or a female for the locks with the cut. We'll take care of that in a minute, but I'm going to change that to suppress. And never be afraid of the suppressions or that. They're usually fairly simple because geometry has changed, ID numbers have changed, and it's a simple edit, select the proper stuff, and everything's fine. Let's address the locks. I am going to right click on this cut 13. And the issue is, is that this is a sheet body. Inside and outside is a little ambiguous. Uh, so all I have to do is go invert active object say OK. You can see that the locks are proper. Last, I have this round. And the round, because they flip down, those curves were never selected originally. If I edit the feature now and these locks are the proper way, it remembers those curves. I just have to say OK. Uh, next, We'll go to the core and cavity block and the cut suppressed. I'll edit and the cut was suppressed because these faces didn't exist originally. And it was kind of didn't know what to do with that opening when it cut it. So clear selection, pick as an object, I'll say yes. Uh, next, we'll go to the cavity block, switch the core and the cavity parting line, edit feature. Same issue as previous with the core block. Clear selection, pick this, yes. Flip the arrow, get the result we want, and say OK. Okay, now we're going to take care of one more thing, just again to show working through it. You can see all my ejector pins and return pins are all untrimmed. The pockets are there. Take a look. So I'm just going to go to the mold operations and I'm going to kind of just bring up the core skin because the spaces are still whole there. I'll start with the return pins and just do an edit trim there. Pick the faces and then next I'll go to the ejector trims. You can see nothing is selected as far as faces. All these faces are new. Uh, to the trim command, ejector trim. And once I've picked the faces, I can say OK. Those are all good. And let's get rid of that guy. 
bring back the core block. And the last thing we'll need to address is the, the ream lengths. You can see the ream length has uh, been cut down, cut way down because the part difference from R1 to R5. Because I've done ejector trim, updating the ejector pocket is as simple as saying edit feature and saying OK. And the reason for that is the ejector trim reestablish the length of those pins and the ejector pocket is taking that variable and using it to update the ream or the fit length okay so that is replace master and we'll take a look at uh, the next option in ECO option two Option two is replace faces. This is the option I used probably 90% of the time. And it is just a better workflow when implementing changes to more complex designs or later in a design or even after uh, the job has been finished and then an engineering change comes up uh, after the fact. Uh, I'm going to go through my method, and my method is to create a new part and then basically end up with all the new faces in that part so that it's easier to uh, place in the job. It just gives me a little more control uh, and not dealing with a whole part and just uh, isolating the changes. So to begin, we'll turn off the mold. Uh, you can see that I do have an ECO part here that I loaded at the time of loading the work parts. So I will display that. And I'm going to go over to Tools, Add Comparison Part. Go to where the new data is. So this one's Rev3. See the scale is zero. I'm going to select the ECO part. You can now see its scale has changed and updated to what's into the tool. Uh, I can name this ECO. So managing my changes down the road uh, will be a little clearer or if someone else has to go into this job. And it's asking me to select the previous modification part. I can select the part I brought in when I loaded the work parts. I'll say OK. And again, this is strictly just loading the new part. Uh, from here, I'm going to do one more uh, step before I actually do a comparison. I'm going to make the parting active and I'm going to create a new part. And this new part will be the part that receives the changed faces and isolates them from the, you know, dealing with the whole part. Okay, so just gave it a name and added on UCS, assembly UCS. Say OK. And now we're ready to go to ECO. We'll right click and say New ECO Comparison. Typically, we would just do a analysis between two parts. And it could be the new data to the work part, or it could be the new data to the um, original part that came in when we loaded the work parts. I want to introduce a third part to this equation, the one that's going to receive the changes. And to do that, I will change this from show all to exact compare. And now you'll see it's selecting the previous part as 
uh, the original part in the ECO uh, assembly and the new part that we just added. The receiving part, I'm going to change it from the work part to that new part I made. And now I can say start analysis. So it comes up with the changes. The color coding we went through previously. Uh, showing what the uh, new faces are, uh, coincident faces, and unchanged faces. So from here we'll say OK. And now we're going to run the replace faces command. So again, we'll go to ECO. Compare number two and say replace faces. Highlighting all the faces it's going to uh, that are involved. I will say OK. And now I turn off everything else. You can see that this part contains just the faces that are involved in this ECO. make this active and I can go to sets just for some clarity I can say new set cavity faces and I can start to place those faces or isolate the faces um, into that new set. Let's just unselect this because it picked too much. Change this to single face. There, there. And a few more faces down here. Okay. And I can say add them to that set. Hide other. And for clarity going forward, I'm going to change those to blue. Blue is new. At this point, I need to decide, am I going to import them into the cavity parting skin or directly into the block or if I had lifters or if I had slides? Uh, up to you. It really depends on when this change uh, came in and uh, how much history you want to deal with. Uh, in this case, I'm going to cavity parting line. First thing I'm going to do since, you know, this is a new change, I'm just going to reset the history here. And from here, I'm going to start removing geometry. Turn my filter back off. I'll turn it on now. And now I can start selecting geometry I want to remove. that and that and a few more faces here 
Turn the filter off. Remove geometry. Again, we'll do a double check before we Looks like I forgot one face. So that's why we check. Uh, actually, let's edit this. Okay. So I think that takes care of it. Again, double check. Look around. Yeah, everything looks good. So from here, we want to do import geometry. There. Select all this. And then this stuff here. Okay. And again, you can associate or disassociate, up to you. And say OK. I can now turn off this part. And now I have changes in the parting skin. I'm just going to improve the display settings. Just looking a little choppy. And here I'm going to do a composite. Trim. Composite over here. Bounded. I can see I am missing a few faces here. So I'm going to display this back. Go back to the import geometry. First step. And just make sure I get all the faces I need there. There. Okay, so that's one thing I do see a number of users do. Um, they they would have added another import geometry here instead of just going back a couple steps and updating that one. So, okay, so the change is here. We've taken a care of a couple areas. Let's deal with the bigger area here. Parting line change. And the sweep I'll do by reference, a little past. Okay, uh, line. And let's make that add whatever angle we want. I'm going to go 45. And wireframe intersection. This to this. Composite.
trim this face. Trim these faces. Trim that face. And we'll make a composite. Oh. Trim this face. <clears throat> Create a composite. <clears throat> and one more trim here. Okay. So that's all trimmed up. Let's uh color these faces again blue for our new <clears throat> I can do a stitch here okay I can now go to the cavity block in this case Here's my PL cut. I'm just going to edit the feature. Clear selection will select the skin. Flip the arrow. Say OK. Now I do have a few modeling uh, commands in my, cav my cavity block. They'll probably require to be suppressed and then we'll deal with the suppressions again. Again, don't panic when you see suppressions. Uh, they're usually fairly simple to work through and uh, not as intimidating as they look generally. Okay, so I am going to go to end. <clears throat> I can turn off my parting skin and we can look at you can see all the changes are in <clears throat> I'll deal with the suppressions here and these have to do with some poor modeling on my part so it's just a quick way to fix a couple areas when I did clearance So it's just a matter of reselecting geometry and ID numbers and that uh, probably changed after my stitch. And that is why it's not sure how to or what to select. So again, a couple selections, not a big deal. And then the last one to remove extend. And again, that's because of my modeling technique wasn't the best here. You can see I got this silly edge right there. I'm just going to 
select it. And now it's gone. Okay. So that's replace faces. Again, a technique I use. Um, I hope you hope you uh, got something out of this webinar. Kind of learned a couple techniques that you can carry on. Again, everyone works a little different, uh, but if you can gain some benefit from this, uh, I hope you have. Thank you for, for uh, watching, and we'll move on to questions. Uh, you can visit our website at www.symmetron.com. Uh, if you're in North America, you can contact us at support-us at symmetron.com. And if you'd like to contact us by phone, you can reach us at 877-596-9700. Extension 1.